The Massad jaw recorder is a modern, innovative version of what has previously been known as a Gothic arch tracing apparatus or a central bearing point device. The jaw recorder can be used for the following applications. Recording centric relation for edentulous, partially edentulous, and implant patients, balancing the occlusion of final prosthetics orthopedically repositioning the mandible, otherwise known as splint therapy. The jaw recorder is supplied as a complete set comprised of these parts, small pin receivers, large pin receivers, and modified pin receivers, striking plates, a brass pivoting nut and vertical pin which inserts within the nut, a clear plastic positioner disc, this disc has a circular opening which is beveled on the functioning side. The pin receivers and the striking plates are constructed of plastic, making them disposable and easily adjustable for various arch sizes. The striking plate has a T-shaped tab on one side to adhere to the mounting medium. The large pin receiver has a circular projection, which will be mounted upward. The pivoting nut will be secured into this projection and the vertical pin inserted from the opposite or downward side. The small pin receiver also has an upward circular projection into which the pivoting nut and vertical pin will insert in the same manner as the larger pin receiver. The modified pin receiver is supplied in four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. It differs from the other pin receivers in that the circular projection is mounted downward to conserve space and the pivoting nut and vertical pin are inserted from the side opposite the projection. With the Massad jaw recorder mounted, the patient's jaws can be stabilized in space and mandibular movements can be recorded at a desired vertical dimension. Here are the different scenarios in which the recorder can be utilized. Fully edentulous patients edentulous and implant combination cases where one or both arches are to have an overdenture. Fully dentate patients. This is particularly important where mobile teeth are present. The recorder can stabilize the jaws in space, making it possible to suspend the arches. Recording centric relation without depending upon the unstable teeth. Partially edentulous patients, whether the teeth are mobile or not. Mounting the Massad jaw recorder for the edentulous. A base plate is fabricated for both the upper and lower arches with a light cured tray material, with care taken to block out any significant undercuts. The base plates should also be slightly underextended in the vestibular areas. This is to eliminate any unwanted movement of the base plates caused by muscular or vestibular movements. The recorder will secure the plates in position. For the edentulous patient, one striking plate will be used along with a large pin receiver, pivoting nut, and vertical pin. The striking plate will be used on the upper base plate and a large pin receiver with a circular projection upward on the lower base plate. A pivoting nut along with a vertical pin will be placed in the projection of the pin receiver and held in place by friction. Once attached, this assembly will suspend the jaws in space and stabilize the base plates. A light cured tray material is placed in the palatal vault of the upper base plate and the striking plate is seated into the material, making sure to have enough material to secure the striking plate. The plate is positioned to extend slightly anterior beyond the periphery of the base plate, ensuring adequate contact area for the vertical pin during the patient's excursions. A rope of light cured material is applied to the underside of the pin receiver and placed onto the lower base plate. The receiver is positioned such that the pin is approximately along an imaginary line between the mandibular second bicuspids and parallel to the retromolar pads. The two setups are placed in a light curing oven. Once cured, they are ready for use. When placed in the mouth, 
the practitioner can adjust the vertical pin length to hold the patient's jaws at the working vertical dimension of occlusion. Establishing the patient's resting vertical and then allowing for an appropriate amount of freeway space usually determine this. A common problem among Gothic arch tracing devices is that, if they are not mounted correctly, the pin will not contact the striking plate in a perpendicular relationship. When this occurs, the assembly will not stabilize the base plates. The result is a rocking motion of the plates and an incorrect centric jaw record. The unique design of the Massad jaw recorder allows the operator to reposition the pivoting nut, establishing the proper perpendicular relationship. The base plates are then seated and the pin contracts smoothly on the striking plate without rotational movement of the bases. For accuracy, this pin position should be evaluated for anterior-posterior movement, as well as lateral movement. Correction of the pin positioning in both planes allows for the pin and striking plate assembly to register a proper centric tracing, as well as fully seat the base plates. The alternative to the Massad jaw recorder for occlusal registration is to use opposing wax rims. The problem with this traditional approach is well known, as it is very difficult to bring the two wax rims together simultaneously without interference from one side. This will result in rocking of the rim and an inaccurate occlusal registration. The Massad jaw recorder completely eliminates the inaccurate rotational movement. Mounting the Massad jaw recorder for the indentulous arch against implant overdenture, if a patient is to have mandibular implants, the lower base plate can be fabricated with recesses to fit over the retentive elements of the implants. This will prevent rocking of the base plate due to incomplete seating over the implants. If there is concern as to the clearance of the base plate over the implants, holes can be cut in the base plate to ensure seating and to provide visual confirmation of this seating. After the base plate is fabricated, the pin receiver can be attached in the same manner as a complete denture. In this case, the maxillary arch is to have a complete denture and the striking plate is attached to the maxillary base plate as previously described. If, when the bases are placed in the mouth, it is found that the vertical pin does not contact the striking plate in a perpendicular manner, the pivoting nut can be repositioned until this relationship is achieved. Shown are the steps in fabrication of jaw recorder bases in this scenario. Mounting the Massad jaw recorder for mobile teeth. In this case, there is a partially indentulous mandibular arch with large tori and mobile teeth. It is virtually impossible to record a bite using conventional methods such as wax or bite registration materials, as the teeth will move when pressure is applied and the mounting will be incorrect. On the maxillary arch, there are also mobile teeth combined with large tori. In these cases, a record base is fabricated with tissue stops in the edentulous areas for stability. A pin receiver is placed on the lower base plate, slightly below the occlusal plane. In a dentate or partially dentate case, it is necessary to utilize either the small pin receiver or one of the modified pin receivers to avoid the teeth when mounting. Similarly, on the upper arch, a base plate is fabricated with tissue stops in the edentulous areas and palate. A striking plate is then attached, once again staying below the occlusal plane. The striking plate can be easily trimmed with an acrylic burr to avoid impinging upon the teeth. Mounting the Massad jaw recorder for long mobile teeth. There are often situations in which the patient presents with extruded mobile teeth or teeth with an excessive overbite. In these situations, it is impossible for the patient to function with the vertical pin contacting the striking plate, as the teeth will contact, not allowing a tracing to take place. If the teeth are to be restored or extracted, the teeth can be shortened to allow for movement of the jaw recorder. The means to accomplish this task is to have the dental laboratory fabricate a reduction coping from a vacuum-formed clear plastic material. 
This coping can then be placed over the teeth on the model and the coping as well as the teeth beneath. It can be trimmed to the proper height with a dental handpiece. This same coping can then be taken to the mouth. The tooth structure to be removed will be exposed above the coping and, with a patient permission, this tooth structure will be reduced. In this manner, it is confirmed that the same amount of tooth structure will be removed from both the model and the teeth, ensuring accuracy of the centric record. If necessary, this can be also performed to the second arch to gain adequate clearance. Recording the centric record. Regardless of the occlusal configuration, the centric record is obtained in the same manner. The striking plate is coated with ink. The vertical pin is adjusted until it is holding the jaws at the desired vertical dimension of occlusion. Once again, it is important that the vertical pin contact the striking plate in a perpendicular position. If not, adjust the position of the pivoting nut within the pin receiver until such position is achieved. The patient is instructed to move or rub on the striking plate, going forward, back, and side to side. The result will be a tracing on the striking plate with a line showing anterior to posterior and two lines showing side to side movements in the posterior position. The point at which the lines intersect is the patient's unrestrained centric relation. The clear plastic positioner disc is adhered with sticky wax, bevel up, over the point of the arrow. The patient is advised to close into the disc hole and hold this position. A rigid bite registration material is injected between the record bases to firmly loot them together. The registration is removed in one piece and the laboratory will use it to mount the case.